Okay, so now we have our blank screen. A bit boring, we need to start adding some things to it to make it uh, into a game, don't we? Uh, before I do that, I just want to point out, if you click play, it will move you to this screen where you can see your game and when it's working, play it. And then you click edit game, it will move you back. In fact, you can use the escape key to switch quickly between those two views. So edit game takes me into it. Play game allows me to test it. Okay, so we could do with adding some things to this. So let's just click anywhere in the screen. And then I've got this create option. Okay, so now I'm going to create what we call an object in the game. The first thing I want to do is make it look like something interesting. So up here you see it says edit sprite. Now a sprite in games is actually the graphics, the picture, the image. So if I click on that, it takes me to this place where I can build, draw my own graphics. We're not going to do that. That takes a long time. We're going to come down here to browse. Then we're going to come up to menu. And then there are a whole lot of different libraries of sprites of pictures we can use. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Flow Lab sprites. You can use any of the others if you want. Just don't take too long choosing or you won't finish your game. So in the Flow Lab sprites, I've got different kinds. I'm going to go to Block. And look, here's different things I can put in my game. And I'm going to choose this one. Okay, that looks cool. I'm happy now. So now I'm going to come down here, bottom left, and I'm going to click OK. So now we have the sprite. It's important to give things names so that we know what we're looking at and we can easily, we'll need this later. So I'm going to call this grass because that's kind of what it looks like, OK? There are all sorts of other things here. You don't need to worry about them, but just know they're there. And you'll see there's a little button here that says physics. We also don't need to worry about this, but obviously grass does not move, so it's not movable. It is solid. We don't want our player to fall through it. Okay, so we've got the idea of physics. And then if I click this, I go back to properties. So there we go. Okay. So now we have some grass. So what we're going to make in this tutorial is what call, is called a platform game or a side scrolling game. Okay, so we will be looking at our player from the side. I can move this around. I just click on it and drag it. I'm going to put it in the bottom. But I could do the whole lot more. So I'm going to click on it once. And I've got this option here called clone. Clone means make a copy. Okay, then I can click, hold the mouse button and drag. And I can make a whole lot of more of them. You'll see that I've gone off the edge of the blue. That's okay. In fact, this level is as long as we want it to be. It just simply, uh, the blue bit is showing us where the camera is, what the player will see. But when we move around, we'll be able to, the part they see will change. So I'm going to put some different parts in here just to start kind of building my game. Um, let's see, make it a bit interesting. I'm going to use switch to the hand and then I can move further along. Then switch back to the arrow and I can continue to do things. OK, that's enough for now. OK. Oh, look over here. I think that's a bit of a mistake, right? I didn't mean to put these ones here. So I can switch make sure I'm in arrow mode. Just remember if you're in hand mode or select mode or arrow mode, and I'm going to click on that. Uh, oh, I need to click done cloning. A number of times I forget this. So I've finished adding. I click done cloning down here and it goes back to the normal. Now if I click on this, I can click delete and get rid of it. I should be able to click delete and get rid of it. There we go. Um, or I can put my mouse over it and I can press on a Mac. It would be a delete keyboard. On the Windows one you're using is the backspace, the key with the arrow to the left, and that will get rid of it. Or I can just mouse over it and press delete. Okay. So we've got some ground. We need a player. 
So I'm going to click anywhere. Let's go here. Create. That doesn't look like a player. I'm going to go to edit sprite. Change the way it looks. And I'm going to choose one of the images we have already. So browse. Menu. I'm using flow lab sprites. And characters means like people, monsters, things like that. So I click on characters. And I'm going to use this one at the top. Okay, I'm going to use this one that's going to the left. We see there's different versions of it that look like it's walking. We'll use those later. So there we go. There's our character with our red nose. I'm happy with that. Okay. Again, you can choose some of the other libraries, but just don't take too long. Before I go any further, I do want to make sure I name this so that I know what it is later and I can refer to it. So I'm going to call that player because this will be the player. The rest I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to look at the physics. Okay, yes, he should be solid. We don't want him to fall through the ground or her, but it also needs to move, doesn't it? So it needs to be able to be movable. And now you see this got affected by gravity. Yes, yeah, so we want it to fall. I mean, otherwise, what's the point, right? So I've got a player that I can move. It's solid, doesn't fall through ground or walk through walls, and it's affected by gravity. All looks good. Properties. Damn I'm happy with the picture. I've given it a name. That's great. Before we go any further, let's check this is working. So if I click on play, takes me to a play. That's looking quite good. I'm happy with that. You can see the bits that are cut off, right? But he can't do anything yet. So the next thing we're going to do in the next tutorial is begin to add movement and let our character move around and do things.